Hello everyone, this is Taekwon from New Hampshire and this is your RIPE Global Implantology case review. Today I would like to share a case of Lisa. Lisa was presented to my office for evaluation on treatment of unrestorable tooth number three. Uh, the general dentist figured out that tooth had severe bone loss and caries and potential fracture. So because of that, tooth was deemed unrestorable. Now, Lisa had temporary restoration on tooth number four, which is the second premolar, which will be later be crowned in the future. Now, tooth number three, when you look at the radiograph, you can clearly see that possibly there is periapical lesion on the mesial buccal root, has an existing endodontic treatment, and for bone loss around the furcation area and you can clearly see there was some caries uh, around the tooth. Now when you look at this case you can clearly see that Lisa lost some vertical height of the bone especially around mesial aspect. And when I'm doing the extraction of this tooth I want to make sure after I extract I want to clean out this socket completely where bone has been replaced by the granulation tissue. So I'll make sure I want to remove this granulation tissue completely. And then I would like to restore not only the horizontal dimension of the socket or maintain it, but also I would like to grow the bone as much as I can coronally so that I can make up for this vertical bone loss. And also not to mention, there is a sinus which is in proximity, especially to the palatal root. So when I do the extraction, I want to make sure that there is no communication between palatal and palatal root socket and maxillary sinus. And if there is, then I should be able to repair it at the same time. I do expect a couple, little bit of buccal bone loss as well, preoperatively, knowing the size of the bone loss on the mesial socket too. Now, when you do extraction, I strongly, strongly recommend sectioning the root. By doing that, you can clearly preserve as much as bone surrounding the tooth. And it will also allow you to apply less force during the extraction, which means less trauma to the tissue and alveolus too. And also for patient comfort too, because there will be less force that will be applied, patient will be a lot more comfortable. Secondly, sectioning is also very uh, useful when you are doing extraction around the area where adjacent teeth have large restoration or crown. Because when you try to elevate a tooth with multiple roots that are long against a tooth or teeth that have large restoration, sometimes there's a more chance that extraction can lead to damage to the adjacent teeth restoration or the crown. So... When you're sectioning the upper molars, always you want to think about the Y shape. You want to section it through the furcations, from the buccal furcation to the mesial palatal and distal palatal furcation. Just remember, the furcation, interproximal furcations on the maxillary molars are palatal to the interproximal contact. Thus, when you're sectioning, your sec extent of sectioning on interproximally needs to go palatally like that. So when you look at it from a closer, it should look like Y shape, not T shape. After I section the tooth, I check making sure I section all the way to the bone and then I start elevating and tooth has been extracted atraumatically. You can see I preserved the integrity of the bone there. You can kind of see a little bit of bar mark uh, around the alveolus. And I started cleaning this socket completely. And when I was cleaning, I realized that there is a huge buccal dehiscence on the area. So which means whenever you see a buccal dehiscence, I want to repair it. So after that, I elevate the flap. But when I elevate the flap, I do it so that I can manipulate the tissue to close this socket completely. Because in here, I'm not doing only the horizontal augmentation, but I also want to do a little bit of vertical augmentation. And I would prefer, if possible, to achieve primary closure in this case. So I drop two vertical incision, 
when you're doing the vertical incision always bevel towards the flap which will minimize the scarring and you can clearly see when i elevate the flap there is a large buckle dehiscence from the mesial buckle and distal buckle socket and also it will give me so much more access to clean out the granulation tissue after i clean out the granulation tissue this is where i use cortical bone, human cortical bone, to repair the socket. And then not only that, now I have buckle flap elevated. I would love to increase the volume of the bone beyond the socket. This is a great chance because there's no reason why I'll be confined by the socket width. I would love to even increase more. So you can see that I added more bone buckled to the socket. So now this is where buckle, uh, well, socket graft turn into more ridge augmentation. And after that, I put a membrane tucked from the buckle aspect to the palatal, and then I achieve the primary closer by advancing the flap. And when I do that, first I put the horizontal matrix from the buckle aspect to the palatal to bring this released flap coronally. And after that, I use series of suture, in this case, continuous suture using 4-0 Vicro and 3-0 um, uh, chromic gut sutures on the uh, crestal aspect to um, maintain the primary closer. This site needs to heal for almost six to nine months in, in considering the size of the defect. I do understand that some dentists and clinician would like to re-enter this site at four months uh, even, or even three months sometime. But where the more I do socket grafting and the more I do implant, sometimes you need to slow down to get better result. It is clear, clear that when you give enough time for the body, then you'll get much better bone. So depending on the size of the socket, often I wait six to nine months. And after that, uh, when I place the implant, obviously I need to manipulate the tissue a little bit uh, to bring mucogingival junction that has been coronally advanced back to where it's, it's supposed to be. So right now, by doing coronally advanced flat, I'm just borrowing the tissue temporarily so that my bone graft can heal under almost primary closure healing. Less chance for contamination, less chance of losing graft during the healing. Three, membrane will be much more protected during the healing as well. So I hope that you find this um, case helpful. And if you want to learn more about the bone grafting uh, and a traumatic extraction and even implant therapy, please join the Ripe Global Fellowship in Implantology. Then until the next case, uh, take care and then I'll see you later.